pom pom and welcome back to the Miskatonic and let's get right back into it. Let's go talk to these people. Ephelim. Essentially, you just need to maintain your resources, spending them on a village and stat upgrades. But village upgrades give passive benefits to both villages, so you need to be careful that you're not helping out the other team and their village. See, that's where I went wrong with my first game. After I constructed a breeding pit, the other village gained enough population resources to speed their building and foraging processes. What shit are they talking about? <laughs> We're talking about game. So after you've drawn from the encounter deck, what if you... If what you draw is a monster, pick from the monster deck, then you can choose to fight or flee. If you fight, compare your player card's ferocity stat with the monsters and add a d6 to both stats to determine whether you will win or lose. If you want to flee, it's the same process with the li liquidity liquidity state stat? I don't know. Once you've returned to the village board, you can add your successful foraging tokens to the villager's stockpile. Whatever team successfully builds their village first wins, or whatever team's village runs out of food, materials, or population resources lose, loses. Do I have to go by my in-game name too? Wouldn't hurt. Must be talking about some kind of board game. Never played one before. Not many places to put the board when you're off dancing in the woods with nothing but a smile on. <laughs> and nowhere to keep the pieces. <laughs> Hair is tickling my neck. Shoot. What's unique about our planet is all the plants and animals share a universal language or sort of collective consciousness guiding things like migratory patterns, blooming seasons, what is predator and what is prey, things like that. It also acts as a conduit of the emotions of organic life. A flower is plucked, the garden screams, a cow is slaughtered, the whole herd weeps. Humans seem to have lost this ability over the last 100,000 years and those few that hear it go mad with the knowledge of it. Wow. Just so you know, the planet is very upset with you humans. Guess I better go apologize to my bagel. <laughs> oh man, I hope that ain't true. As a witch cultist of love, a love goddess, I should probably be spreading the love to everything, not just to humans. But I've eaten a whole lot of burgers. <laughs> Hello. How's it going? <laughs> Can't complain. So you're the one who taught the Ethereum to talk, huh? Uh, I guess, but I think he knew already. Hi, I'm... Wait, wait, let me figure it out. Hmm. Layer of grime over the extremities. So you are aware of the mutagenic atmosphere and have applied a hum home remedy. So you're local to New England. But no real accompanying stench other than that of dead flowers. So you're often with other people. Mind wobbling at the touch indicates a lack of exercise, but... Or oh, mild wobbling at the touch <laughs> indicates a lack of exercise, but the very dirty boots means you are outside in the rain a lot. Judging by the short black skirt and choker, you are an active worshipper of Shab Nagurath, the goddess of love and humanity. And combining the grime, wobbliness, smell and outfit, you must therefore be a member of Chess and Cook with Witch Coven. Wow, exactly. Although they were just observations. So what's with the creepy tentacles? This is as close to a handshake as I get. <laughs> oh, well, enchanté. <laughs> so what's your deal? Oh, I'm Jessica Morgan. I'm the record keeper for experiments performed on the Necromonicon. Thought I was a detective before my arms got all noodled. <laughs> noodled. How do you keep records if you can't control your arms with a handshake like that? How would you hold a pen? What do you mean? I have perfect control of my arms. Oh. Oh. Well, it was nice meeting you. See you later, Ethereum. <laughs> Bye, Spooky. <laughs> oh, this is super creepy. I love the artwork to this game. This is Bob's office. Do those wormy things act as your arms? That's pretty groovy. Yep, the thing to remember about all these occult shenanigans is that the most of these monsters are just really ugly animals, and animals can be trained. Oh, how'd you train them? Traditional combination of treats and mild punishment. 
As a treat, I let them keep my arms. <laughs> and as a punishment, I headbutt the shit out of them. <laughs> now they never, never leave mummy's side. Don't even have to command them for the easy stuff. What counts as easy stuff when training floating worms to act as replacement arms? Oh, you know, cooking, cleaning, getting changed, all the essentials. You should see me play the trombone. <laughs> Ew. There are several benefits to having internal organ replaced by a half-sentient liquid slurry. For example, you wouldn't believe how much of your brain is dedicated to simply maintaining the atomic processes of your body. With the slime, my brain is now free to fully ponder the questions of the universe. Ah, well I gotta admit, you're putting a good spin on this. Still having to carry a handkerchief around to mop the incorrigible slime out of my eye sockets is a drawback. Forget hygiene, you're at the Miskatonic. If you're only trailing black slime, you're practically cleaning the place up. <laughs> Nothing gets an occult scientist down, I guess. Though wouldn't his brain also be replaced by the goo? The geography building has probably the least dangerous sessions on lessons on campus, but also has the highest security. Can't have the public figure out where the plateau of, of Ling is, or worse, Ryla? Why not? You know how some people can't help but get close as they can to the scene of a car crash? Imagine that car crash being cent a centralized supernatural apocalypse based in the Pacific Ocean. Folks would climb over each other to check that out. Yeah, I guess. I bet it looks pretty radical. So what's with folks changing their names for that board game people are talking about? It's to make the consequences of the game seem more real. A lot of people need to, an escape from work or their studies, and the game's a good way to do that. Huh, you think I could play with you guys when I got some time off or whatever? Depends. What's your in-game name going to be? Uh... Thrust Powerful. Badass Barbarian. Saving Sick Wenches or whatever. Hmm, no. Bye. <laughs> And everyone else's dumbass names. Whatever, who'd want to play a game where Thrust Powerful the Badass Barbarian sounds non-canon anyway? <laughs> Bob. Bob. Good afternoon, Charlotte. Are you ready for your first assignment? Sure, lay it on me. Excellent. The Miskatonics has a small research a small research outpost located all over the world dedicated to collecting and relaying occult data back to the university via radio one of such outposts is in new orleans where you'll be going okay what happened in new orleans I'm not sure our researcher is supposed to relay daily radio messages back to us hasn't checked in for several days your task is go to go to the outpost and knock on the door if he's there ask him ask why he hasn't been relaying the data if he's not return and tell us that's it. Knock on the door. Exactly. Under no circumstances are you to enter the outpost. Just knock. Just leave. Uh, okay, so how do I get there? After a few, well, disasters, the government demanded that the Miskatonics experiments be completely sealed off from the outside world. As a result, every outpost in the country is interconnected by these tunnels. Help stop transporting creatures running off into the wilderness, see? Spooky. So I'm walking to New Orleans? Oh, no, of course not. You'll have a driver. Hi! Ah, <laughs> uh, hey, Lizzie. Looks like driving down the spooky-ass tunnel system together. Yeesh! New Orleans is not too far in straight lines. Get there lickety spit. Have fun, you two, and remember, don't go into the outposts. Okay, see you later, Johnny. Where'd you come in? Yes, this is the place. Oh, that's weird. The door's open. No. Well, the mission is to knock on the door, see if anyone's in, and then leave. The door's open. Something bad might have happened. Like what? I don't know. Could be anything. Maybe they're out of banana bread. Maybe someone's pregnant and they've got to get a doctor. Maybe Cthulhu cultists have invaded and invaded to have a sick hoedown. <laughs> Maybe they're pregnant with Cthulhu cultist banana bread baby. <laughs> We should check it out. Supposed to be an orthomerized... Oh, supposed to be orthomerized to go into outpost. Nun witches and witches are for knocking on doors, not poking around outposts. Come on, we'll be 
you know, showing initiative. They'll be like, wow, Lizzie and Charlotte, you sure saved the day poking around that outpost. Good thing you did, or all those chupacabras would have got back to home base and ate all of us. I don't think that's what they'll say. <laughs> well, I'm going to take a look anyway. Feel free to join me if you want to save the university from chupacabras. <laughs> Guess I'll be okay if we just look. Yeah, the goo. <laughs> okay. Uh, where do we go? Huh? Fear the goo? Written in goo. What goo should I be fearing? Should I fear the goo? The fear the goo sign is written in? Maybe it's peanut butter. Humans are allergic, right? Only the ones who hate deliciousness. <laughs> mm, nope, I think this is a warning about the same goo it's written in. Can't be that dangerous then if the warner preferred using it over, you know, a pen. Maybe he has no pen. Maybe it's pen is goo. Maybe that's why he's so afraid he... Because his pen is goo. <laughs> guess, uh, guess there's only one way to find out. Let's keep going. That's a lot of goo. Hmm. Shit balls. <laughs> the door's locked. Oh? So there might be goodies inside. Eldridge goodies. Look, it says there, extraction facility. This must be where they're getting the goo. We gotta get in there. Why? Because if someone tells me to fear something, I like to know exactly where that something comes from, and how to punch whoever made it in the head. <laughs> Whoops, some ass. <laughs> Besides, it sounds exactly like something that the hottest new occult detective team in New Orleans would do, right? Solving some sick mysteries. Okay. Hold all findings. Ooh. It's like a syringe. That's a beefy ass needle hole thing too. The goo is either going into something or coming out of something. Either way, it looks like it'll hurt. It'd hurt like hell. Yeah. Hmm. Looks like a poster of Innsmouth, home of the Deep Ones. Maybe that's where whoever lived here was from. What's a Deep One? They were the race of fishy, froggy folks that lived in this underwater city off the coast in Innsmouth. In exchange for plentiful fishing and crabbing seasons, they would mate with the local Innsmouth babies and create little baby hybrids. Apparently it was a pretty sweet deal. Until some wandering douche came through the town and ruined it, went and told the government they torpedoed the underwater city and rounded everyone up and sent them to concentration camps and whatnot. Kind of sad, really. I hear the little hybrid tadpoles are adorable. <laughs> Hmm, some sort of manifesto. April 9th, half a gallon. His name was Daniel. April 10th, two gallon. Told me to give her locket to her lover. April 11th, one gallon. He was still alive. What have I done? And then it stops. Huh. Hmm. Ah, looks like a diary. Each night, my darling wife, hidden in the back room of an Orlesian brothel, prays to her goddess Shubnagurath. Keeping faith, Groovy. That we might find a new home and that I might find work much less dreadful. She's becoming too large to convincingly lie that she is carrying a human child, so we must gather our pennies and leave soon. That's oh, a little photo. Oh, look at her, so pretty, so full of tadpoles. And he's kind of handsome in that, you know, amphibious way. Oh, Why is that, Oh, Why is that not ooh? The storybooks say there's no purer love than that between a girl and a frog. <laughs> what? <laughs> April the 12th, 1936. Hey, that's yesterday. 
A new prisoner is delivered for Ooze extraction. He claims he was a riverboat captain with a ship that sails up and down the Mississippi River. He claims that there is a deep one refuge situated in Minnesota, where, wherein my people live and thrive, hidden from the university's horrific testing and the government's terrible camps. I shall rescue my beloved tonight under cover of darkness, and we three shall make for Minnesota. I shall miss the radio call in and they shall send someone to investigate in my squalid concrete prison. We shall be long gone. Ah. Looks like the university was keeping this fellow against his will, using him to extract goo from folks. Why? Maybe we should ask him. No way, if the university is as evil as this guy says they are, we best keep our mouths shut and do a little independent investigation. We got to find out what this goo is, what they're using it for, and why they've been such bastards. <laughs> holding cell, not for holding delicious pastries. Damn it. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Shit on my deck. Another goddamn locked door. <laughs> you look angrier than you should be. Sorry. The concept of, you know, privacy makes witches a little testy. Whatever, let's find ourselves some keys and F these locks up. <laughs> what is this? I don't even know. What the fuck? <laughs> are those the super rare dead Randy monogamy cut? arc covers? How did he get these? These are ultra banned across all America. I gotta, we gotta take these. What? <laughs> Did Randy, the sexy necromancer. It's the cute little incubus that runs around saving zombie girls after the world ends and then boning them. <laughs> this story arc was written by my first coven den mother, Agnes G. Willeker. <laughs> It's a story of how this succubus girl, this purple girl here, wants dead Randy all to herself, but while they're all mutual, dead Randy gets sad that he's not boning madames. Mad dames. Madames. Mad dames. And him and the succubus girl learn that love should be shared with everyone, not saved for individuals. It's adorable. <laughs> Why'd humans ban it? Ah, uh, the same reason they ban everything. Folks weren't getting too cheerful. Promoting cultist ideologists, ideologies, they said. Not sure how love everyone you can and don't be a douche is considered the same as, you know, let's get Cthulhu to F the world up, but whatever. <laughs> Plus, I guess Dead Randy's pretty rampant in this series. Hard to get that love everyone message across in a story about a nymphomaniacal blue midget without getting, you know, vigorous. <laughs> But the message was so awesome, completely true to our cult's mantra, and everyone in Chesson Cook thought us witches were pretty groovy after the stories came out. Preach love and compassion for the universe offers neither. They put that as our town motto after Miss Agnes wrote the series. Come on, he's got to have the hard copy somewhere. The girls in the coven will shit their minds when they hear what we found. Oh, a key! A key to the holding cell. Let's head back to that locked door and check it out. Yes. Success! Now let's find where this goo's coming from. Ugh. What's that? It's a brain. A human one. With holes in it. Don't humans need their brains? Uh, yeah, yeah, they do. There's got to be an explanation for this. University stealing brains to extract weird orange brain goo out of them? I mean, why? What's the point? This is probably why they don't want us in here. Because of brain goo experiments. Yeah. We're going to have to play it cool, figure out who we can trust at the university and ask them some questions. Well, ruman has been there a while and I know I can trust a fellow witch. And you can trust a fellow Izzy. Exactly. That's like half of the faculty right there. <laughs> Besides, I'm sure there's a reasonable explanation for all of this. We just gotta be careful not to get fired for insubordination or treason or whatever. Come on, partner, let's do some sleuthing back at the home base. So, Charlotte, how was your assignment? 
Good, it was good. Knocked on the door, waited around outside for a little while, no response, came back home. And you didn't go inside the outpost? Inside? Oh no, no, I didn't go inside. I was told not to, so I didn't, so I just knocked on the door and left. <laughs> inside? You're crazy. Right. Well, we'll send a team to investigate and search for our missing researcher. Thank you, Charlotte. We had no intention of sending you on an assignment so early. So, uh, what do I do now? You return to your quarters and get some rest. Tomorrow you start patrolling the occult science building. Right, right. Well, talk to you later, Bob. Looks like we're in the clear, Liz. Are we still being detectives? Damned right, we're gonna get to the bottom of this, but for now let's get some sleep and start investigating tomorrow. Okay, see you tomorrow, Charlotte. I'm gonna go pray to... Yogsorath. <laughs> see ya, Lizzie. <laughs> and with this, I'm going to leave this video here. I hope you've all enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye, everybody!